Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today we are talking Twin Peaks. I am dressed in my red room floor Adidas jacket, which is reversible by the way. It's red on the inside, obviously. What other colors should it be on the inside? Well, maybe black. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for following all the Twin Peaks uh, shenanigans that have been going on uh, on this channel and also on all stream platforms. Uh, I have a theory for you today. Now, I've been thinking about Diane and this video will 99% uh, involve her. Let's say 98%. I know that David Lynch loves Laura Dern and I, I don't see how he could make her an evil character, really. It's been a long time coming. Um, as we know, she was always supposed to be Diane. Now, finally, she is Diane. Why make her evil? Diane was kind of infatuated or perhaps maybe even in love with Dale Cooper. And what we know, what I have gathered until now, and when you watch this video, uh, it by now I have seen the, the first 10 episodes of Twin Peaks Season 3, The Return, from 2017. So... There's still eight episodes to, to go and um, everything might change from episode to episode. But as of now, what I do know is that she's wearing a wig. Uh, the wig has a so-called bob haircut. I have mentioned this in my other videos. Uh, Vidal Sassoon uh, was the hair artist that invented that particular type of haircut. And to me, it is very symptomatic of the fact that, well, it's called a bob haircut and it's white. And it's very reminiscent of how Leland's hair just turned white overnight uh, in the original Twin Peaks in the 90s. And it made me think, mm, this is just speculation, but she might be a doppelganger. And which made me think, and go even more further back to the Twin Peaks from the 90s, that Leland Palmer turns white overnight, his hair turns white. Could it be that he was the Leland with the regular colored hair was just feeling so guilty and realized that he had actually killed his daughter, that Bob brought him to killing his daughter. I know that he says that he was possessed by Bob since he was a little boy, or that's what we're led to believe, but could it be perhaps possible that he also knew of the existence, well, through Bob? Maybe he found a way to communicate with Bob and to extrapolate from Bob information as well. Uh... Leland was relatively weak, but maybe he also had his ways of mind games with Bob, and maybe he found out how to access the lodge, the Black Lodge. And is it possible that in that night, we don't know what Leland did that particular night when he turned, when his hair turned to white, but could it be that he went to the Black Lodge trying to, I don't know, redeem himself, change the fate of what happened? shift time or revenge his daughter, attack Bob, hoping that he could extrapolate Bob from himself once in the lodge. No clue. But this is just, of course, theory. Uh, probably not even true, but fascinating to think about that maybe overnight he actually went into the lodge and kind of Bob was playing him for a fool and uh, let the doppelganger Leland out. Hence, we have the doppelganger Leland with white hair. Now, we know that once Leland dies uh, in the sheriff's station, uh, we have kind of this sort of confession and it doesn't seem the confession of a doppelganger, but it could have been a very shrewd, calculated type of confession from Bob through the mouth of the doppelganger. We don't really know. Hence, perhaps the real Leland is still in the Black Lodge, maybe dead, maybe not. But something similar, I'm just thinking, through this white wig of Diane could be representative of Diane being a doppelganger of herself. When Gordon Cole says that uh, after visiting the long-haired Dale Cooper in prison, Diane hugged him in a weird way. He didn't feel very comfortable about that. Um, was it also because perhaps it wasn't the type of touch he was used to from the real Diane? Um, and if this is still the real Diane and we're not dealing with a doppelganger Diane, uh, could she still be so infatuated and in love with Dale Cooper that she's trying to investigate on her own, what has really happened to, to Dale Cooper. Now, if it is true that the long-haired Coop, uh, the Bob Cooper, went to visit Diane, you know, after he exited the lodge, um, and, and that fatal night that they spent together, 
if we're to believe that that was that one encounter and then he left and didn't see her again, which we now cannot really believe because he's communicating with her through mobile devices, but if indeed um, she did really see him only once, but that one time was enough to scare the living crap out of her and to make her want to research, to figure out where is Cooper, is that really Cooper? Something is terribly wrong. And perhaps she is playing a do double, a double, a double game as well, um, making the evil Cooper believe she's on his side, while in fact she is running her own investigations behind his back. What is also symptomatic to me of a kind of doppelganger Diane uh, is this weird encounter that we have with uh, Gordon Cole and Albert in her apartment as we see this gentleman call her leaving, her kind of spending nights in bars and drinking um, as if she was on the prowl, on the, hunt, on the hunt for, you know, for flesh, for men. And it's as if there was, you know, something... It's totally fine. If you're in the mood for it, heck, go for it. I ain't the one to judge. But what I want to say is it, the way that it's all depicted, it, it almost seems like she, she has some fire in her that is not Diane's fire, but of, of something else. So she might be possessed. It might be a doppelganger that's not possessed. It might be a possessed doppelganger, or it might just, worst case scenario, it just is Diane as she is and... But then I would ask myself, why would she do anything for this evil Dale Cooper unless he really fooled her into believing that um, he's not indeed evil, that he is indeed the same Cooper he always was and he plays with her emotions and maybe just is making her do all these things because he knows that deep down inside she loves him. But either way, I try to turn this uh, Rubik's Cube and either way, I try to kind of fit in the pieces of the puzzle and with every outcome of the combinations... I do not see Diane as evil. I always see some reason to her either being tricked or being blinded by love or by her emotions that perhaps are not love but very, very deep affection. I see some other reasoning rather than just being purely evil for the sake of it. Because if that were the case, uh, when Dale Cooper was still Dale Cooper before he entered the Black Lodge the first time, well, at least the first time we saw him entering it, uh, why would she have been such a nice character figure? Why would he so lovingly talk to her on his dictaphone or whatever? Um, either way, we turn this puzzle. I still believe, and we are only at episode 10 now, but this, so don't take my word for it, but my prediction is she's not evil. And the only evil in her was either, you know, corrupted by the love that she has for this character, not knowing that he indeed is an evil version of himself, or she has been tricked into turning, you know, herself into the lodge or entering some entrance of the lodge and exiting as a doppelganger. Or she's possessed. So tell me what your thoughts are in the comments down below. I'm really curious because at this point, Diane is a very, very fascinating figure. Uh, even more proof to the fact that Lynch loves Laura Dern so much is that he's giving her not this kind of just in the surface beloved character Diane, you know, one-to-one, -one good goody two-shoes that is very depressed that she had a terrible life since Cooper left, but he's giving her nuances, he's giving her depth, and that depth is, um, is making her extremely uh, interesting, even more than she already was, and Laura Dern on her own has incredible charisma and power, uh, incredible camera presence. Adding this question mark on top of her makes her just that much more interesting. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please do thumb it up. If you haven't already but do wish to, please consider subscribing to my channel here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Now, mind you, I give everybody the benefit of the doubt. In case somebody tries to trash me and bash me, I still give them the benefit of the doubt because they might just be a doppelganger of themselves. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. Never give up on love. Love you. See you soon. Take care. Bye.